from this to this. Stick around to see why it might be worth visiting Como, even if the weather is terrible. Como is a small city situated on the shores of the very famous Lake Como in the Alps of Northern Italy. It is a very easy day trip from Milan with frequent and fast trains. The history of the city dates back to ancient times. It started off on the nearby hills, but was moved down to the lakeside by the orders of that most famous of ancient Romans, Julius Caesar. Como had its ups and downs during the long and interesting history, and today it has a population of about 85,000 people. The main reason people visit this place is because of its location on the shores of Lake Como. I've heard it's stunningly beautiful. However, when I visited it was, uh, how best to describe it, murky, and it was raining quite a lot. However, I'm still glad I went as there is plenty to see. Walking around the west side of the lake, there are several large and extravagant villas. These will have you dreaming of how it would be to be a millionaire and live in such a place. Well, at least that's what I was doing. You might also be lucky enough to see flying boats or float planes taking off and landing. The most impressive of the villas is the majestic Villa Olmo. The gardens are open year-round and are full of interesting statues and a fountain. Not to mention great views over the lake. Okay, I'm guessing the views are great, I couldn't actually see them. There is also an old paddle steamer moored up, not sure if it's always there but the birds seem to like it. The villa was built between 1797 to 1812 in a grand neoclassical style. The interior of the villa can be visited when there are special exhibitions on, so check before you go. I'm not sure what the exhibition was on when we visited as I went in mostly to satisfy my architectural curiosity and we enjoyed looking at the ornate and frescoed rooms even if it was a little dark. Heading back towards the city there are a few other interesting sites on the lake shore. First is the war memorial to the fallen of World War I which is a soaring tower inspired by a sketch by the influential visionary architect Antonio Sandelia who was a citizen of Como and was killed in World War I. Nearby is the Tempio Voltiano, a stunning neoclassical temple and museum dedicated to another famous Como resident, Alessandro Volta, who was the inventor of the electrical battery. It was not open when I visited, so if you've been inside, let me know in the comments below what it's like. Before heading into the historic city, it's worth taking a stroll on the long pier, or is it a walkway, I'm not sure, through the marina. Here you can admire the boats and birds as well as look at this futurist sculpture, also dedicated to Alessandro Volta. There are also great views of the lake as well as nice views of the historic city. Walking back and around the marina there are also boat piers where you can hop on a boat to tour the lake or ride to another lakeside town. Perhaps the most significant building in Como is a stunning cathedral. Construction started in 1396 and the building is sometimes referred to as the last Gothic cathedral built in Italy. Construction lasted for centuries. The west front with its lovely rose window was built in the 15th century and the majestic dome was the last piece of the puzzle and finished in about 1770. The interior is large and impressive. There was a service happening when I visited so unfortunately I was not able to walk around as I usually would do. The rest of the historic city is well worth spending time exploring with plenty of interesting shops and historic buildings. Here are some highlights. As we were walking around and exploring Como, I had been keeping my eye on the weather forecast and nearby webcams. 
and I'd noticed that the cloud cover seemed quite low, so we took a chance and decided to take a ride up the funicular to Brunate. When we got to the top it was very disappointing due to the heavy cloud, so it's difficult to see if it was nice up here. One great spot however is the wonderful church of San Andrea at Postolo. The interior is lovely and covered in decorations and frescoes including the lofty dome. After visiting the church, we decided to risk the weather and hike up to the nearby peak of Monte Valletto. The walk is about one and a half hours or so, and there is also a bus that goes about halfway, although it's not very frequent, so check the timetable. As we continued to ascend, the, the clouds suddenly started to thin out, and eventually we hiked above the cloud layer into stunning sunshine. It was a really amazing moment, and only the second time we'd seen a cloud inversion. Continuing on the clearly marked path, there are a couple of nice mountain restaurants along the way where you can stop for refreshments. They all have amazing outdoor terraces with panoramic views. And then the highlights of the entire trip, the peak of Monte Valletto. At 1,278 meters, it's not that high, but the views were stunning, especially as we were lucky enough to be above the clouds. So we decided to wait for sunset. Totally memorable moment and a good lesson to not stay indoors because the weather is terrible. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you in another video. Cheerio!